let's shift over into working with the uh, DeFi strategy that uh, the hundred wax that I had. So I went last week. I had played some uh, limit orders on the wax USDT uh, order book on Alcor. I had a couple. I have one more here. It looks like I'm just going to cancel these for now and uh, pull the money back and turn it into wax and then turn that wax into the next strategy that I want to uh, follow. So this trying to trade this market, the margins are kind of small and I don't think we made much of any impact on it since it's not an active thing I was doing. So uh, let's go back and just swap back into wax and see how much wax we're at. If we do this, so 55. So we started with a hundred wax. Monosuerte also said one note on the stock side is that GME announced that the board votes oh four to one split. split and i promise yeah. that is all i'll say about stock <laughs> they might even do dividends is what i'm hearing rumors of and those rumors tend to be pretty accurate but uh yeah the gme stuff i think exists in its own little ecosystem like the gamestop short squeeze is still in my opinion very much in effect if you take a look at what like the leverage is and the borrow price of of uh, short selling gamestop it's still very clearly dramatically over leveraged and there's m potentially still more naked shorting happening than there sh than has been uh brought to light i would say and doing a, a stock split will require uh naked shorting to basically be closed so this could force another squeeze in gme uh if you are paying attention to that whole fiasco uh it looks like we made about four percent in profit from trading so far not amazing but we can do better i think so uh the move i wanted to pursue this time uh for this week with our 100 wax investment here is uh over on DeFi box if we go to DeFi box and i'm gonna exit and log in with with my wallet here we got DeFi one FTW. Okay, so check out this. Um, if we're on the markets page on DeFi Box, it'll show you like all the different tokens that exist, and it shows you the depth of liquidity that exists for those tokens, uh, which is right here. Sorry, not this one. And then this is the 24-hour uh, swap volume. So how much money is moving back and forth inside these tokens, the current price, and then on the far side here, you see. APY, this is based on a yield that DeFi Box platform pays for you to supply liquidity. So uh, you can see like Aether, for example, has that as well, or if you're supplying Box liquidity. And you can always see if you go to the swap tab and you go, for example, to Wax CMW and you click on the liquidity button. And then here you can click on details and it breaks down the uh, source of this yield that it shows. So uh, fees. Uh, this is based on the last 24 hours of performance of people swapping back and forth. That's that 20,000 uh, wax that was moving back and forth here. Uh, there's a 0.3% fee that the liquidity provider, which is the pool, takes per trade. And that 0.3% is adding up to 9.8% of the total value of the pool uh, annualized out, uh, but in real time. So this is APR basically. This next one is 3,000% CMW mining. So that's a reward being paid by the CMW uh, token team uh, for people supplying liquidity. Now, the opportunity that uh, I wanted to pursue this week is supplying liquidity to this pool. And the reason for that is uh, really easy to understand. I think if we just look at the token distribution breakdown and do the math on what's happened recently. So this is the CMW token uh, the token itself has a, a hard cap of uh, 13 million total. So there's never going to be more than 13 million tokens. And we can check to verify this uh, on the actual like block explorer. If we uh, come here to CMW on EOS authority and you can see max supply is in fact capped, hard capped at 13 million. So wonderful. That is accurate. And we can keep reading now about the distribution. How is this 13 million tokens being sent out well there's an nft sale and 41 percent of that total supply or 5.4 million of these tokens will be issued to the nfts being dropped during the sale 
Now, if we go to Discord and look inside their um, in their meta uh, crypto metaverse in the announcements, you can see here uh, the sale for that first round of NFTs, which represented that 40% allocation, 41% allocation of all these tokens uh, did not sell out. And so the unsold assets were being burned and the affiliated tokens that are associated with those assets are also being burned. Those token amounts are right here. Uh, so for July, it's 1.2 million CMW that will just be burned entirely. It will never make it into circulation and will never be like re-released or recirculated in the future, effectively reducing that 13 million token supply down to 11 million uh, 800,000. Now in August, they're doing the same amount again. And then all the way through December, which is the end of when those NFTs would have stopped printing. So I did the math on this and the math adds up to about five point. Uh, so this is 5.4 million that is supposed to be distributed. The amount that's being burned is about 5.3 million. So there's only about a hundred thousand CMW that's going to be released through the NFTs that have been sold in this initial sale the remainder of the cmw to be released into circulation is going to be released starting with the second nft sale which happens after december or in december possibly until now between now and december the only way for cmw tokens to enter the circulation uh the circulating supply is through owning these nfts from this first sale or from the uh the free like giveaway partner nfts like we will give away some of those at the end of the stream um or by participating in this portion of the distribution, which is the liquidity mining, 1.3 million CMW, so 10% of the total supply being distributed out through this DeFi box pool. And that's where the source of this 3000% APR comes from. Now, uh, oh, whoops. Now, it does say it's 10% of the total supply, but we also just saw 40% of the total supply has now been destroyed effectively leaving the total supply at 60 percent meaning this 10 percent of the total now represents a significantly higher portion of the distributed supply meaning that um it's no longer 10 percent it's it's more like 20 percent basically now but like closer to a little less than 20 percent i think uh, i'm just doing math in my head now and i feel not confident in that math but uh Either way, the, the fact remains now, the distribution of this token is gonna be extremely limited. Like we're only getting 100,000 of them going into circulation from what was sold between now and December, and all the rest is coming from this pool. So that means if you participate in this pool by supplying liquidity, uh, you get your cut of this distribution, which is pretty much the main distribution for this token. Um, so if we go to liquidity, you can see here, people are jumping into the pool to get paid out their cut of this token. And uh, let's do that actually here in real time so you can see how to participate if I want to. So I've signed into DeFi Box with my wallet. I'm gonna go to the swap tab on the top right. I'm gonna select Wax and CMW is my second token and I wanna split a 50-50. So I'm gonna go uh, 50 and I have four extra. So I want 52. That gets me 13 CMW. I'm going to say swap and sign. Sign to that. And now I can come over to the liquidity tab here. And with the same two tokens selected, if they're not auto already, you can choose them from your list here. Say add liquidity. And then select, you know, my top one, which is now looking for its counterpart. That's going to work. So I'll say yes, sign. Sign this one. Success. Okay, now I can exit out. And now you can see here, I have a position in this pool now. 13 CMW and 51 wax. That represents 0.6% of the total, meaning now of the distribution of this token for the next three or, f uh, what is it, five, almost six months till December. Uh, for that entire period, I'm going to be getting my cut of those CMW being distributed to liquidity providers. So 
on these grounds alone, I think this is a reasonable thing to expect to participate in for this week with our investment here and see how it um, how it performs, not just in price, but also in, in yield. Now, if you're doing this on your own wallet, uh, you can actually compound the yield because uh, by, by default, uh, if we see here, uh, let's swap. Uh, by default, it's not compounding. It's just stacking up your uh, rewards. So if I go to liquidity and look at details, you can see that the uh, uh, RTAPY, which stands for real-time APY, which is actually just APR, um, you, you see that it says it's 3,000%. But then on the CPD, uh, which stands for compounded APY, it says it's greater than 100, uh, greater than 10,000. So this is actually greater than like a million. But eh, it's greater than 100,000 for sure. I'm not sure if it gets all the way up to a million. But it's what this means or what this is implying is what your yield can be if you reinvest every... I think this is done by every day. Uh, let's see. Compound APY is calculated with the assumption of claiming rewards and adding the uh, liquidity every day. Okay, so once a day. So you can even boost this further by claiming and restaking it into this, effectively compounding your own position. The way you do that, uh, and we're not going to do it with this wallet because I'm not, first of all, I don't have a big enough position to make, to do this multiple times anyway. But, uh, and second of all, I want to only do moves while we're on stream. So uh, just to show off how you can do that, if you do want to compound your own position, uh, assuming like the protocols uh, instructions assume every day. So let's say you do this once a day, I would come back tomorrow after uh, 24 hours have passed. And then I would click up here to this uh, little three arrows, which brings up the little uh, list of options on DeFi box. And then I click on mining and then I can scroll down to the bottom here. Yes. Come on. There it is CMW and you can see I've already earned 0.04 almost CMW tokens. Uh, I would click claim. I don't have a lot of CPU stake to this wallet, so I'm not gonna like start doing this as well. Just I could click claim and then you'd have like, let's say I'd claim my 0.04. Then I would come up here. Uh, I would take my 0.004, which would get me this. So I would wanna take half of that, turn it into wax and then go back to liquidity and supply, add the liquidity manually again that process will compound the earnings and start the basically the stuff you just claimed will then be earning at the same yield rate at three thousand percent basically so then you will be uh able to you know compound your three thousand percent into like i think it's something like three hundred and eighty thousand percent or something ridiculous either way it's very very insanely high right now and the only way for it to come down is for the pool to get deeper or for the price of CMW to drop. The price of CMW is pretty much controlled exclusively at this point by people who are mining it. And those people are the people who are maintaining this liquidity pool. So a lot of the people who are getting paid out the CMW are in a, in a vested interest position to make sure that price doesn't collapse. This is a kind of like unique uh, opportunity that is kind of like brought on by this weird situation where the tokenomics are built in a sound way where the distribution model was uh, thought out well but then the original sale didn't do well so the burning that was written into the white paper and that was promised that unsold assets would be burned that burning and the extent of which assets were burnt over 90 percent of all that was burned uh leaves us in this like unique situation where now this token is more or less exclusively distributed through liquidity pool rewards and those liquidity pool rewards are substantial uh, and you can see how that plays out if you go back to the market here uh, right now it's three thousand percent and then you can see if you look at this line people add to the pool more people join in and then somebody takes a big payout and dumps it onto the pool but then as people like keep joining and so you'll see these like hard sell-offs are definitely definitely something i expect to see and uh personally to admit if i'm doing this with the strategy like with my own wallet that i'm not just letting ride for a full week right now what I like to do is withdraw kind of on a regular basis, the mining rewards and swap them back into wax until I've gotten back the wax that I started with. So in this case, I would, you know, claim my yield, sell it for wax until I have 104 wax back in my wallet. And then I would start doing the compounding to add it to the liquidity pool. 
to try to like maximize the yield uh, in the medium term, keeping in mind that December is the date when a new sale will bring a different uh, a different distribution stream of these tokens into the ecosystem. So this strategy has an end date, uh, which is still five months out. But that's kind of like, I think that's a really good thing to try to here uh, do on stream with our wallet, with our DeFi wallet and with a hundred wax, I think we can, I think this will last for a week. Uh, and then in this time next week, we'll see how, uh, how 3000% APY or APR uh, actually looks on a hundred wax investment. But I think this is a really interesting like opportunity if you believe in the the like medium to long term value of CMW, which does have a really like elaborate like and well thought out distribution, and they're very much sticking to it even when the sales don't go the way they plan, which is kind of nice to see. It's all being done transparently by a team of people who are capable at bringing like functional back end and and front end products to the market and have grown that stuff like through their battle miners interface i was very impressed with how they built yeah, all that we interview them on tuesday if anybody wants to check out yeah. more about the project but not only are it's battle miners but the guy who partnered with battle miners who's the founder like he created like the first bitcoin atm in finland and you like has created functional systems where you can withdraw bitcoin from an atm like into cash and stuff so definitely yeah. like someone who has experience in the space bringing functional products it's not just like someone who's brand new who's never done crypto stuff before so him teaming yeah. up with battle miners guys who's i think their strong suit has always been the back end like the systems always yeah. worked well they made their own marketplace they also made it to get like vote for collections there's governance within battle miners and like say what you want about the game and how fun it is like it's a very functional system as far as like the back yeah. end goes and it was functional from like the very beginning and it, and it wasn't like a grind to get it like looking clean or working well plus this this whole platform is designed for people to be able to short-term lend out nfts for uh wax loans which is definitely a niche product at in its current form but is a product that serves a niche that is being underserved or not served at all in this space at the moment so all of those reasons make me think uh you know this is not a as much a gamble as it is a, an opportunity to try to like you know capitalize on understanding the tokenomics and the uh effect that the distribution changes uh will have on those tokenomics while also supporting a team that i feel like builds value for the wax space but I feel like that is, that's kind of the overview of that strategy and why I think it's a worthwhile play. Uh, mostly it has to do with the fact that, you know, between now and December, the amount of wax or the amount of distributed tokens is no longer being mined by NFTs like they initially planned, but is almost exclusively being distributed to liquidity miners, which means if I were to buy like a 5% position of this entire pool right now, that means I'm getting 5% of this distribution and then if I take that 5% and reinvest it into my position in the pool, unless everybody above me is also doing that, I will outpace the bigger whales uh, on a long enough timeline as well. So this is like an interesting little like distribution model. But at the same time, let's take a look at the token. It's very, very new to the market. Uh, there is a total of, let me refresh the uh, EOS authority. There's a total of 70 wallets holding this coin right now so definitely very like underground unknown and necess not necessarily like the safest bet like a brawl kind of play or like a uh what is it like tlm recently had a nice pump but yeah that's kind of like oh yeah you can see oh, I most TLM of the in one of first giveaways yesterday got myself 500 oh, yeah. tlm and i definitely sold it when it pumped so Shout out to yeah. Atomic Inc. Shout out to Burst. Thanks for the wax that I will now be able to go spend on other projects. Yeah. Oh, and then the other thing is you can use the CMW right now on these auctions. What's up? What's so on, there, yeah. What up? Just showing off the for the DeFi strategy this week. This week we are joining the liquidity pool of CMW Wax. Dude, that's insane. But, <laughs> the APR you're getting on that. Why did the price spike? When besides you, <laughs> you, we bought we were streaming and I bought right here at like one not two one point nine. <laughs> I bought at first and then I bought again 
like I think Toon bought some around like here too, and I bought again around like two point four. And uh, at, at this point, I'm like, let's see. Well, it's interesting because yeah, like 50, it was at two wax per CMW school. when we during the interview, and then like twenty four hours later, it was like three plus uh, wax to CMW. So I I just didn't know what spiked it or if the liquidity is that yeah. low that you know the liquidity you and a few other people that, that like bought a chunk and it could pump it that much the thing about it is that the, it's similar to neon token like the only fucking way to get it is to you know either participate in the liquidity pool or burn your like current like uh assets which oh yeah that was the last thing i wanted to show off the thing that we were going to give away what you can do with those um here it's these types of cards stream raiders really quick if that's okay okay sure yeah okay yeah yeah we don't have to rush through this I hear the battle horns i heard it <laughs> i did push the price too and you're right i pushed the price up quite a bit i added like four thousand wax when it was around two wax per token and that pushed it to like 2.7 or 2.6 or something like that you got in like in between my two buys which <laughs> is funny yeah, I mean, my first buy was like I pushed it from I think 1.9 I pushed it up to 2.1 and then the, by the next time I bought it, it was at like 2.3 or something I bought from 2.3 up to like 2.6 yeah I'm curious on the sell pressure if the people producing the CMW token if there's a lot of people trying to dump I, I guess the, the the speed at which people can sell it is controlled by the emissions rate of uh -huh. them accumulating it so even if people like just produce the token and dumped it immediately it kind of slows the pace just naturally yeah it's uh, exactly yeah and then uh i the strategy that i was outlining for uh if you have an individual wallet not what we're necessarily doing with uh, the DeFi wallet was uh the best like sensible most sensible not the best way to like maximize profit from a strategy like this but the most sensible move is to claim your rewards turn them back into wax until you've recovered 100 percent of the wax you started with and then you can compound your position after you've recovered your principal yeah here so if you want to yeah honestly i'm curious like obviously when max is talking about the returns he's getting he's doing this with very large positions so i'm curious to see this like, move in parallel with more normal people values and to see the <laughs> rate at people. which that can um that can actually like produce some wax it is um, so we the box just rewards would have been a nice way too but you know those got pulled right so let's let's take a look at this people still get box rewards but basically you have to whale in because the top 15 people in the liquidity pool will be receiving yeah. box but nobody else I don't really understand why they did that. Why not just like distribute it based on the portion of the pool you have? I agree. Smaller yeah. players can still get box, but I don't know. DeFi box is in DeFi box. <laughs> so we've already, we just put this in here. We're already able to claim and sell 0 0.08 ish wax. And we did this with 100 wax. Uh, so like 100 wax paired with total. 100 wax for the CMW or 50 no, 50? No, 50 50. Yeah. So you can see we just added liquidity. We have, we added. Here's the original, uh, let's see, current liquidity. It's slightly less CMW. So we already made a couple wax here. We made like 0 0.1 wax. Shit, somebody. I might jump in on this. <laughs> and <laughs> so I, I was also doing the math on this. I'm making in my big ass position, which is like thousands of uh, wax deep. It's it's 10% per day. Wow, damn, so yeah. It, it, it only takes like 11 days or something. I'll have my principal back and then I can start like messing it in a different way. Yeah. But you can see here's yield farming, it, and I'm one. Let's see. Uh, that's not. So it's one, two, three, four, five. I'm the sixth biggest liquidity provider in this pool. Uh, with, yeah, with seven point three percent of the total position. I had eight point one yesterday. So more people are joining this pool, and I'm being diluted because I am claiming my rewards and turning them back into wax right now while i'm trying to recover principal if i was trying to maximize my potential yield from this i would just claim the rewards split them 50 50 and recompound into that pool it does seem like the position the it's more advantageous to do this liquidity farming than it is uh to buy the cards and produce the token well did you see the the first part of this thing i was showing off was the distribution here right 
41 percent of the 13 million total supply is was supposed to be sold through those nfts that didn't sell well yeah and, and that represents them, yeah. they burned all of this shit. they burned of the 5.4 million tokens they burned 5.3 so only a hundred thousand of the tokens are actually they burned five point three million of that. Here, look at this. I'm oh on Discord. God, that's insane. Here, burning schedule: one point two million July, one point two million. All of these are being burned. This as oh, doing it in batches, but still, that's yeah. crazy. That's every that's month. Insane. That, yeah. I mean, that's like they're thirty percent burned. reduction in the total supply. It's yeah, almost forty. Yeah, and and that means that this ten percent, which is the liquidity mining is actually going to be producing significantly more value it also means that the nfts that we have for a giveaway which are uh, producing like partner in marketing they put they pull from this pool i think i forget which pool they actually pull from but they pull from one of these nft pools as well uh which here i'll pull them up here uh like these free ones yeah like sorry just parts. to rewind back a little bit um yeah let's see uh Oof Rabbit. So this is this is not a game. It's Credit Metaverse. We interviewed them on Tuesday, and it's basically like in a, a lending platform where you collateralize the NFTs in your wallet and receive a loan in wax based on the t the value of that NFT. They have this token that builds into that ecosystem, um, and this is a liquidity pool for the token paired with wax and then it's incentivized on these DeFi box but this is very much not a game and very much not financial advice <laughs> it's a very speculative thing but we're basing our participation in this on the uh distribution model for these tokens uh which has shifted dramatically ever since this announcement was made on uh, the 2nd of July about them burning all of these tokens, which means that now the way that these tokens get distributed between this event, which now has resulted in the burn at the start of this event, which will be the next time people can buy NFTs that will print new tokens into circulation outside of this liquidity mining thing that we're participating in. That doesn't happen until December. So we have months of uh, of a token distribution model now where most of it will be distributed through this rewards uh, pool where if we go to liquidity and at the current liquidity depth the reward pool is paying 3000% APR and the current liquidity depth is substantial 155,000 wax by yeah that's true there's a lot of people participating in this pool uh, real quick just to chime in um, we did re-upload that interview with cmw uh diablo crow of nft battle miners as part of the team and uh we interviewed alexi as well who's like the founder and so that is on our youtube channel if you want to rewatch that to figure out more about the credit metaverse stuff is it crow or cro i've been calling him cro this entire oh time. i've been saying crow i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> here's a it's just like jazz paws i think we just doubled down on jazz paws with uh chain chance and he couldn't even yeah, pronounce it himself so it's like i don't know jazz paws feels right to me so here's also an interesting thing that if i'm understanding this correctly there's some pretty substantial arbitrage opportunities between what's uh, what i see on this market and what's actually worth um so the thing that we have to give away that we, they gave us a few of are these gray cards right mm -hmm. correct yeah okay cool so what these are is basically like free membership cards like the ones that are currently being auctioned off here or like the ones sorry these these ones are slightly different these are like uh different, but uh like they're like similar to what is part of this main collection so these are when these are the cards that were being uh these ones were the ones that were initially planned to be sold there's supposed to be four thousand of this gold one uh four thousand of this green one and that was the sale that if we see oh, too many open here that was this main collection and you can see of the green one eight were minted and all the rest the contract was closed so they're not going to do the four thousand that were planned only these eight and of those eight already two are burned um and then same with this same deal with this and the gold like you can see these contracts they're all closed like they, they're not going to undo what they announced here the contracts are closed on chain <laughs> agent k bum bag is that agent k for a moon yeah mining? that's agent k yeah this guy, he's got <laughs> yeah he's got multiple of these he he went he, i don't know that's great he's listing it for a million dollars if you Good burn those him. you get 75 percent of the tokens immediately yeah so there you go that's the thing so i guess 
here's the uh, the thing that we're giving away is a similar deal, only it's a little lower. So what this, if you have this in your wallet, it will over between now and the end of the distribution cycle, which I think is December. No, it's just ends, ended, oh, 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 it's oh, yeah, this one has July. Little, so this one goes for July, but between now and the end of July, it pays out 15.5 CMW tokens to the wallet, which I wonder if our giveaway wallet is just getting those tokens. And if, if they are, we could also give those out. If yeah, we we'll also give away the tokens. If oh, interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. I guess you don't have to stake the NFT. You don't have to stake them. It just, staking, yeah. If you have it, it, you get it. And then if you burn the NFT, you get 75% of whatever's left. So if you burn it at the end of the month, you'll get you know what hasn't already paid out. Plus that 25% will be taxed and whatever people, when people burn these, the taxed amount is also removed from circulation. So there's a crazy amount of burn pressure on this fucking CMW token. And uh, the move here could be that if, you know, you could buy these, you could do the math. If you see one listed on the secondary market, like this one is 45 wax, you could burn it, say for 75% of 15, which is what, like. 12 or something. Poppin' Stock said he burned one yesterday and got 10.1 CMW. Okay, so 10.1. So it's right now it's about four wax more than, but if you see one less than that, you should oh, be able to buy it, arbitrage it opportunity. and play those yeah. opportunities too. That's Because really I'm sure point. there's it's complicated and there's a lot of people who probably don't understand what's going on with those. And a lot of these are give, being given away by influencers to help like grow awareness of this project. And I'm not sure how deep these influencers are diving into like this content with their audience. So it's possible people will get this gifted and just list it for like 30 wax or whatever, which would give you the opportunity to buy it, burn it, and then immediately swap what you get for burning it for a 10 wax profit. So very low counterpart risk. Uh, if you see I that do kind of like listing. that as a giveaway mechanism. It's like, hey, you win this in a giveaway um, and you burn it and you're like, I don't really care. This isn't really something that's in my purview, but you burn it, get value for it and still contribute to the value of the token for a project that you're not really that either you're indifferent on. Um, it still is positive for the tokenomics. And so I, I kind of. I, I'm, I'm impressed by the amount of burn cases here. Like we'll see the long term um, for this and, and project. The whole... it, it's nice to see from a tokenomics perspective, um, the level of detail that goes into this. The pitch of his, the future to where they're doing a peer to peer lending service where I could be like, oh, I, I'm, I'm willing to pay like $200 or 200 wax to, to lend to you in exchange for you locking up one of your like rare NFTs that I would buy from you for 200 wax. But then if you pay me back the 200 wax plus interest, you get your NFT back. So like they're building that kind of a platform where it'll be like peer to peer and you get to decide how to do that. And 50% of the fees that get collected for the platform. So there's a small like fee involved with using that kind of peer to peer system. And 50% of what that small fee is gets used to buy back CMW token. And those tokens are also burned. So there's like a permanent like burn pressure from the like utility side of this platform that they're building. So I really like what they're like what they're pitching is certainly like a very new kind of like oh wow we're we're almost double what I bought these for yesterday. Careful, Lou's Lou's gonna Lou's gonna snipe your NFTs. He's gonna use your own greed against you. It's true, because like I mean that's another thing, is like if you wanted to do something like participate in a liquidity pool like this while it's hot, you could totally, you know, collateralize a few hundred wax, get that wax, participate in this pool for a week, make the money in this pool take all your wax out and then get pay the wax back plus interest and keep the difference that you made over what you were charged in interest so there are ways to play these types of like situations and these these tools that are being built but it is a very specific like use case for people who i would consider like power users in in the wax space it's not like the average wax collector is going to be like Oh, wonderful. Finally, I can collateralize my NFTs and, and take on short term loans. You know, that's not necessarily something everyone's looking for. But the people who do want to participate in stuff like that do end up participating at, at a high volume of value. And at the end of the day, the value is what drives the burn and the value proposition to the CMW. So even if the CMW token doesn't have an ex, a like uh, explicit utility case where I can, oh, I can stake it to do something or I can pay with it to pay for some specific service, but it only has its utility case as, oh, it gets bought by this platform being used by people and then gets burned. 
that is also like a, an interesting pitch. I don't know. We'll see how all of this plays out. But either way, let's take a look. AY asks, this. where are the NFTs when they are collateral in the CMW wallet? And yes. yeah, I'm pretty sure they're in a custodial smart contract wallet. Yeah, and when they do the peer-to-peer -peer thing, it'll also be a smart contract that'll be, you know, between like the person making the loan, like the person who's putting up their NFT would then be able to basically create all the uh, specifics. They'll be like, I'm putting up my NFT for one week. I want this much wax for it and I'll pay this much interest for that wax. And then someone with wax can come see what you've posted and like fund your loan basically. And the funding of the loan and then the subsequent exchanging of uh, rights to the NFT will all be handled by the smart contract as I understood it, which is uh, definitely the way to do it. Um, let me check really quick how we're doing on the wallet now. Uh, 0.04 almost now. So if I, if I swap this, what do I get for that? 0.04. So with our 100 wax investment, we've already made 0.15% of the total value we started with. In like 20 minutes. Since the start of the stream. Yeah. Okay, so hour and since a half, not, yeah. Even the, not even the start of the stream. Yeah, it's been less than that. Because we I did this investment after we looked at the crypto charts and after we did the first giveaways and stuff. So this does seem to be doing what I'm expecting to see. And again, uh, I'm not going to be claiming and compounding this during the week on this wallet. I definitely will do that on my own wallets. Obviously, I honestly, I do that multiple times a day on my big wallet because it's a big, like it's a big enough position that it makes sense. You know, it's like it amounts to what is the price of CMW right now? Almost four wax. It amounts to almost a thousand wax per day in just liquidity yield rewards. And I did start with about, I think I started with close to 8,000 wax to do that. So it's not like an insignificant amount, but now that 8,000 wax is almost worth 11,000 wax because the price has come up so much. And I'm still making about 10% of that total value, which means 10% of 11,000 wax. So 1,100 wax a day. Uh, and so instead of trying to do that and try to dump a thousand wax into this in, you know, individual increments, which would, you know, ripple through this chart, I like to do it like two or three times a day and do a couple sell offs, try to recover my wax. And once I have my wax, like I said, then I can shift into, you know, compounding the strategy a little bit and see. I also have a clearer picture of how all of this is playing out. But again, the distribution models are outlined well in the white paper and we do see that there's now a runway between uh you know the ending of of uh, first nft token generation and the starting of the second generation which is a, a five months five months is an insanely long time to be making three thousand percent apr like the also, how, how much think, are they reducing they, it in the second assuming gen? they follow through on the white paper and no shit yeah. gets to happen like yeah exactly i in this space like yeah. even when we saw on DeFi kingdoms on harmony like somebody got access to private keys and like if you can mint tokens that they aren't supposed to mint and then dump them like it doesn't mean this is 100 percent going to play out based on the way the white paper is seen and we've seen a bunch of times in the space where hacks and stuff have came out where it's totally screwed people over so there's definitely risk involved like it's not guaranteed that that's exactly how it's going to play out but according to the white paper if nothing sketchy happens that's how it should play out but you know, yeah, like, that's true. That's no shade all the to the time after sales after they say they won't. They're like, we're yeah. doing one sale. And then they're like, okay, because that sold so well or poorly, we're actually going to do two or three more sales than the yeah. value all the shit that you just bought. So like, we can't guarantee they won't do that. And I feel like you just have to take that into account as part of the risk. Yeah. It's not Certainly. set in stone that everybody follows their own white papers. Definitely. That's a good good thing to add yeah five sure. months in, in nft world is a long time it's a long time it's a long so, time and it's no shade at the team but it's just you know in the space that we're in that is that is commonplace uh not to say that it has anything also to do with, with DeFi kingdom like i don't think DeFi kingdom was trying to do malicious stuff and they still fucked over nope. all their investors yeah their yeah. security breach so if they have a security breach they might not mint more tokens but somebody might get access to their account and be able to mint more tokens and crash the entire yeah. price so like yeah that's exactly. always a possibility and like you know don't throw your life savings into the shit probably i mean we don't get financial advice but that's why it's like it is a speculative asset and it is new and there's always risks so just be careful with what you're putting into it while well, you throw someone else's life savings at yeah. it yeah and another another really important thing to look at this is 
like we were seeing, there's only 70 token holders right now. So all of this value is propped up by a, a handful of people. And a bunch of which aren't... might be their own wallets as well. All those, all, yeah. of, all their wallets are listed publicly, which or at least I mean, we don't know if they're all of them, but they have listed publicly a bunch of wallets that are associated with the team. So that is uh, something to keep an eye on as well. Like how much is liquidity propped up? By the team how much is liquidity propped up by whales like max because those whales could leave at any given time <laughs> yeah exactly he was like, also I'm... whales because like uh was his name alexi was that the name of the alexi yeah he was like the founder ceo yeah, he bid on one of those black cards and those black cards cost like 500 minimum of the, the so yeah they might have personal wallets involved as well but yeah they're they not cheap yeah so here you can see the distribution of the pool uh right now uh it's actually not terrible there's not like one whale to rule them all in this just i'm not in the pool although i'll probably jump in max is i don't know if oh, here's was... Toon. oh tunes in <laughs> nice i'm i'm right here with yield farming so i'm i'm near the top there's definitely individuals uh who have like double my stake but i do have a pretty like substantial slice of this pie where i don't feel like i can be outpaced uh really really quickly and again at these rates, I'm making back my principal in like 13 days or less, like a little like 11, 12 days. Yeah, maybe. Random King, you can use this page to see other LPs. So basically there is like a resulting token that represents the LP position. So like, for yes, example, sir. like Wax Neon, the resulting token is Box X. If it yeah, were on Alcor, X. if it were on Alcor Exchange, it'd be like Wax Neon. And so you can search for that token contract address on EOS Authority or Blocks.io, yeah, and then and you can see, see all of the holders that are holding that token, and and basically see the positions and what percent. Of That's the exactly how have. we send the neon rewards. Like, um, we see like that's I take the list every Tuesday of who's holding Box X, and then you know calculate what their position is in relation to each other. Blah blah. blah. Yeah, like here's a bunch of like all of these are liquidity tokens. Wax shell, wax token, wax. This is like all the different, like here's wax TLM on Alcor. But yeah, so the, 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 the difference is between the exchange or not the, ex well, I guess the exchange, oh, the platform, TLM. like, like Alcor exchange, it just combines them. So like wax TLM would be the token on box. They, they do box and yeah. then a letter. And so, so you, you would have to figure if that If you're out. on box with your wallet signed in, you can click on the mice tab and it'll show you what liquidity tokens you have. So I have cmw plus wax lp it's box and r and then i can come here and if i look at my tokens yoink, i can scroll down and find box and r i do too much liquidity mining on here but here's box and r and then i can pull it up i mean it is and yield farming it's in the name it's that's the wallet yeah that's what it's for <laughs> so you can see there's 77 total people within the pool right now so that's unique uh, the wallets that's unique wallets and keep in mind we only we saw there's 70 of the cmw tokens so there's token holders in this pool who have zero balances of cmw in their own wallet but it's all within the pool so when you're looking for how many unique wallets hold a token asset it's it can help to look at the liquidity provider pool as well since there's clearly more than 70 people holding this token by a factor of almost 10 percent Although I will say like the, the, the UI and the user interface of EOS authority, I prefer over wax stop oh, for sure. Wax bail. Wax also just fucking like can't, there's over like a trillion tokens. that just can't see the max supply and like, yeah, it thinks that stuff is yeah. infinite all the time, which I don't like at all. Like I, I, it makes a big difference for me if I'm going to like invest in something or not based on the token, like max supplies. So like you can see. TLM, for example. Oh, Merita, don't say that Max is smart. His, his ego doesn't need any help. He already knows he's smart. <laughs> 10 billion TLM Max supply. Trust me, I play ping pong against him. He knows he's good at ping pong, and he has to remind me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't played that video in a while. It could be fun to play our ping pong video. Max was talking so much shit during that video, too. I was getting uh, legitimately talk. pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had won the game before it started. I was in his head. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Max is a bit of a poor sport. <laughs> it's fun. It's all good fun. Oh, it's all a good fun. Yeah.
But yeah, he's like, he's like, Paul, Paul, did you see that? Paul, did you see how one? Paul, look at me, I won. <laughs> I was like, corner pocket. <laughs> Damn, yo, 0. 0.05 now. This is a uh, substantial. Like this rewards pool prints pretty well. I'm, I'm very surprised to see how high this is because usually you see high interest yields like this on pools that are very, very shallow. And then as soon as people catch on to them, the, the pool fills up very quickly and the yield goes down. But which we could probably see here on some of these like lower pools. Yeah, like 10,000 wax. If this made it up to what we're at with like seven, what is it? Oh, 150,000. So 15 times higher then you'd basically expect 15 times less APY. So these pools with the same liquidity would probably be printing like 40%.